So you've heard a lot of players switching from uh, a blade style putter to a mallet style putter. Well, look, there's no doubt that mallet putters are a big part of the game now and helping people putt better. In fact, on the PGA Tour right now, week in, week out, it's around 80% of the players, four in every five players, are using a mallet style putter. It's a big change from 20 years ago. And the success, it really has been fantastic. But there's a lot of things that go on in getting the right putter. Not just, hey, let's go get a mallet putter. But let's find out what's the right mallet for us. So what I want to talk to you about is how to find the right putter for you so that you don't end up having to buy a ton of putters every single time you have a bad, bad day putting. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. So what I have here is one of the new um, Scotty Cameron phantoms this is the nine and a half and through some fitting that i have done myself with my assistant greg i've got the the right putter for me and there's a lot of reasons why this is the right putter for me and i'm going to explain this to you and then i'm going to talk to you about how you end up getting into the right putter and as what you can see back over here those are some various putters that we're going to use as we go through this very sort of um quick uh, putter fitting, if you will. Okay, so the first place that I start with when I'm helping my, my players find the right putter is can they aim the putter? So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get a putt very similar to this. It's about 10 feet dead straight. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to put the putter in there. I want to be able to have the putter set up so that the golf ball is in the center of the putter. And then that the putter is lined up straight and then they can make a putting stroke that gives the look that it has a chance of going in. You're not going to make every putter. I mean every putt. Okay, but it's got a chance and that's what you want. So we start with this 10 footer. Can you aim that right where you want to? So I'm going to aim that one sort of inside the right. Now I look up there, that looks absolutely perfect. And now we make a stroke, pretty good stroke, inside right, find the hole. So that's how I ended up with this putter. Now, let me explain to you how I got to this. One, the neck here is what we call a flow neck. So you can see that neck right there. That one just kind of scoots back a little bit. It's about a shaft of an offset. So when I look at that, when you look at that, this side of the shaft is about where the front edge of the, the putter face is, okay? That's how that is, is set up. And that agrees with my ability to aim. In other words, when I aim another putter that has a different neck, which I'm gonna walk you through, I don't aim it quite as well. The other thing is, is that this has a very long sight line. So if you go back in on that, what you can see is that it actually has two sight lines. Some people will see two black lines, some people see one silver line. And there may be somebody, some of you that see three. I kind of see a whole pathway out of that entire thing. So I kind of just see the two black lines, one pathway right down to where I want to try to hit the ball. And then down the line and pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Now, what also goes on in uh, getting the right putter for you is the length of the putter. This particular putter is 35 inches long. If I go back over here and take this putter, this putter is obviously short of that. This is 34 inches. So you can see right there, great look there, Gibbsy. You can see the top of that putter. Let's go over here. You can see that much better there when I go like that. You can see that this putter here is shorter than this. Now. What happens to me when I end up going to this length putter, and this has the same neck, a very similar uh, style. It's a mallet, but it's got different sight lines. When I get into here, what ends up happening is I get too close to the ball. My eyes get on the far side of the golf ball, and what ends up happening is, is that I make a stroke where the putter goes out like this, pulls across like that, and I miss the putts. Now, it doesn't mean that this putter couldn't work for me. It could if this was 35 inches long, but it's 34 inches long. Well, fortunately, 
I have that putter at 35 inches long, but I have a different neck. So now come on in here, and what you're gonna see is I have two different necks. So this is sort of a, a goose neck, if you will. This is a flow neck. That's what I call it. Some others will call it different things, but you can see how much that moves back. Now what happens is, is that when I take this putter and I hang this, this is the flow neck. Go ahead up. You can see the toe hangs down quite a bit. It's not quite a 45 degree angle, but it's very, very close. When I go here with this one, because of this neck, this almost hangs where the face is pointing up to the sky. And what ends up happening with this putter is it has a totally different um, movement in the face because of the way the neck works. Okay? So let me put this down. And now I'll go over here. Set this up. My eyes are now in a good spot. They're inside that, that putter, which is what I like. And what happens because of the the putter face um, in the way it hangs, the back weighting and the neck, the way it works, my putter face doesn't have a lot of opening and closing. So if you're one of those people that fans the face of the putter open, this is the style of putter for you, in my opinion. It has uh, uh, long sight lines, it also is a mallet, and it has the neck that keeps the putter face face balanced. So when that hangs out, that thing is face balanced. I'm not holding on to that just trying to stabilize it. And right there, you can see it's face balance. It's not completely dead parallel to the ground, but it's close, okay? So we get in here again. Now this has different sight lines. These sight lines are white sight lines that are about the width of the golf ball. And then, and you can have a close up there if you would, Gibbsy, and I'll hold that like that. What you can see is you got three dots right here. You see the three dots right there? And then also two, you can see the sight lines, okay? So those are the sight lines. And this putter, I can actually putt with. It's just not my preference. And that's one of the things that you're gonna find. When you start to do this, you're gonna find multiple putters that can do what you want, but you don't like the way one looks or you don't like the way one feels, that's fine. It's okay, as long as you can have success with both of them. So I start with a dead straight putt, 10 feet, okay? And I try to find putters that I can aim. And what I find is, is that with the mallets, I like the long sight lines. So let me go back over here to one that doesn't have a long sight line. Now, this one here is quite a bit different. This one does not have a long sight line. You can see that right there. Has the black sight line. But also, too, what it has is it has a center shafted. So there's no offset at all in that shaft. It's hosled right into the center of the, the putter. Now, this one is, is really clumsy for me because A, it's 34 inches, and B, it's hosled into the center of the putter head, which is gonna bring me even closer to the ball. So now I'm short, which brings me closer to the ball. I'm centered in the center of the putter head, which brings me closer to the ball. And this one here, I have no chance of, of aiming this one correct. If I do, it is literally a fluke. Did I get lucky? I did get lucky. Now, the other thing is this. While there are many of you that have great success with center shafted putters, I don't. And it's not important that you use what I use or you use what your friend uses. What's important is that when you set up, you have a putter that is the right one for you. It could look like your friends, but it could be completely different. So I'll take this style of putter and go now to a putter that could work for me so this is 35 inches long, so it's a 35 inch putter. It's got that little um, sort of goose neck, if you will, kind of falls back a little bit. It doesn't have the flow neck that I'm talking about. And when I have this hang, this also has some face balance to it. 
So these are, are, this is very similar to that other one that I had before, okay? However, it's got a short sight line. And that short sight line, to me, I don't like. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't have success with it upon occasion. But what it means is, is that I will be streaky. There will be times where I'll make some putts, and there will be times, many more times, where I'm not going to make putts. Doesn't mean, like, that one felt really nice. I love the feel of this putter. I just can't make consistent putts with it. So this doesn't work for me. Again, a very different neck than I'm accustomed to. It doesn't have the deep sight line. So the sight line here just goes the, the top line right there. It doesn't go back to the edge of the putter. Okay? Now I'm going to go to one other style of putter, which this does have the neck that I like. It also has a long sight line, one long sight line, and it's 35 inches long. So this putter, boy, I go, man, I could, I could putt with this thing without a question of a doubt. And I can. But I like to have a thick putter grip. Now, what that means is, is that when you change this putter grip, you can change the overall weight. Fortunately, with, with Cameron putters, they come with weights in the toe and in the heel. So if you put on a grip that's a little bit heavier and you want to try to get the swing weight back to, the way, to where it was before you changed it, or you want to add some weight to it, you can do that, okay? But what you have to understand is the weight is really important. So you've got weight that you got to factor in, the sight line you've got to factor in, the neck that you have to factor in, you have to factor in the length of that putter. And then finally, the lie angle. Now this is an important one. So I'm going to go back to the one that is fit for me. And I'll need a down-the-line one here, Gibbsy. So the lie angle is going to be how the shaft of the club comes out of the ground. If it comes out of the ground more pointing up to the sky like that, that would be an upright lie angle. And when it comes out of the ground more pointing you know, along the ground, that would be called flat. Now, when I putt, because of my body, the way my body is made, I have a little longer legs, a little longer arm, the... the shaft of this putter i like to be about two degrees flat and when i get two degrees flat all of a sudden now the toe of the putter and the heel of the putter are on the ground you see some players putt with the toe of the putter in the air you see some putters putt with the heel of the putter in the air i don't want the toe of the putter or the heel of the putter to be in the air i want that putter to be square or flush to the ground so when i put it in there it's flush to the ground now it helps me get the same distance from the golf ball every single time so that when I putt, now my golf ball will go down the line the way I want and into the center of the hole on a straight putt like this. So when it's all said and done, here's what I want you to take away from this. One, mallet putters are such a huge advantage. They just are. You've got mass that's away from the putter face. It helps to stabilize that face on, on off-center hits. It's a, a, a fabulous idea, and you need to get yourself a mallet putter, but you need to make sure you get fit. So when you go to look at, say, a Scotty Cameron putter, you want to make sure you bring a friend because you have to be able to verify whether or not you can aim the putter itself. Don't think that just because you hit a putt and it feels really good that that's the putter for you. That's not the putter for you. It could be the putter head for you, but we got to factor in weight. We got to factor in the, the lie angle. We got to factor in the neck type, the sight lines. There's a lot of things that, that go on in getting the right putter for you. When you do get the right putter that you can aim properly when you get it addressed and the putter face moves the way that you want, it's quite possible. In fact, probable that you don't have anything wrong with your putting stroke. Now you might, but you might not. The reason why your putting stroke might be bad is because you set in like I do when I get a 34 inch putter, my eyes get too far over the ball and I start cutting across it. The length of that putter has an effect and you need to make sure that you're aware of that. So bring a buddy along with you, make sure when you get in there, you get 10 feet from a hole, ask your buddy, hey, how do I look? Great, make the putting stroke. What happened with the stroke? Did the putter move the way I wanted it to move? That one, it didn't. 
But what you're going to do is you're going to keep doing this and you're going to start to see some consistencies of performance. You're making with one, you're not making with another. And as that starts to happen, you're going to find the right putter for you so that when you stand over a putt, you have confidence that you can make it. There's no doubt that a mallet putter is a huge advantage and you've got to make sure that you get fit for it. To improve all parts of your game, subscribe to my channel and click the link below.